Hello there. Uh, welcome to the um, Is Doing Good, Good for Business uh, class. Uh, in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to, we're going to explore whether um, doing good is good for business. Uh, we're not just going to look at some of the um, strategic level uh, decisions that are made in, uh, in business, but we're also going to have a look briefly sometimes at some of the very small, seemingly insignificant decisions made in, uh, in, a, in a business that can affect its relationship with its stakeholders, its customers, its, uh, its, uh, its, its suppliers. Um, but it's a huge question facing uh, business uh, currently and certainly in, the, uh, certainly in the future. Okay, so question here to start off, start us off. What are ethics? Uh, there are many different interpretations of ethics. Um, we could look at ethics as being um, what is morally right or morally wrong. Uh, ethics affect our behavior, our decision making. Uh, we can ask are ethics uh, an oxymoron. In other words, are business ethics uh, a contradictory uh, term? Uh, is it a clash between the word business and ethics? Can they uh, can they go together? Let's have a look uh, very briefly at a couple of uh, opinions. Uh, we got Fox there, twenty twelve. Uh, the only social responsibility of business is to increase its profits. In other words. It should be using its business. It should be using its resources uh, to achieve the the best profits for its uh, investors or for its um, shareholders, as well as some of its other stakeholders. And then we've got a, a link there that uh, you could have a look at possibly, um, which links to uh, Doug um, Maximilian, um, the uh, CEO of uh, Walmart. And uh, he says that uh, doing good is good business. Uh, and in particular, he's referring to Walmart's relationship with uh, Unilever and uh, Unilever's stance on uh, sustainability. So he's linking Walmart's um, business strategy and uh, values, a word we're going to come across um, throughout this particular uh, class. Um, he's linking Walmart's values with Unilever's values and the, the cement, the glue between them is sustainability. Okay, so we're, what's involved sometimes in, in, in business ethics? Uh, we've got a few terms there. The term I would like to focus on is, is trust. Uh, trust is something that's crucial between a business and its, some of its key stakeholders. For example, its, uh, its customers. Uh, the trust that exists between a business and its customers is fundamental to transactions taking place, to exchange taking place between the customers and the, and the business. And arguably, uh, we could debate this, but business ethics is a part of the key foundations of a business. It's, it's an understanding of the business's values, what the business um, stands for. Uh, and increasingly business ethics is seen as, as I mentioned, this foundation of the business. Okay, so are we all ethical? Are we all unethical? How do ethical people maybe start to behave unethically? Uh, the vast majority of us consider ourselves to be morally right, that we are making the decisions that are right for uh, for for a business or for society, so how do ethical people like you and I sometimes possibly may become exhibit unethical behaviour? So let's have a look at us. Our in well individually, I suppose, uh, looking at our personal ethics and integrity. Personal ethics refers to our moral compass, what we individually perceive to be right, and what we perceive to be wrong, and integrity. Integrity is basically referring to doing the right thing, even when nobody's looking. So do we do the right thing by our, our customers, our suppliers, our friends, our um, family, uh, and so on? So how, can, how do sometimes people behave unethically? Or sometimes it's ignorance. I'm failing to ask ethical questions. Am I doing the right thing at the moment? 
for the for the customer, for the supplier, or is it the right thing for the business, or is it the right thing for me individually, or my career aspirations possibly, or my bonus, or my desire to be uh, promoted linked to career aspirations, obviously. Organizational culture. Organizational cultures vary from organization to organization. Uh, they can sometimes, they often reward certain behaviors and they often punish other behaviors. And sometimes unethical behavior is rewarded. It can be rewarded through financial incentives, for example. Uh, the opportunity of promotion, for instance. If you look at the decision sometimes facing um, a, uh, um, a garage uh, where they're repairing vehicles, sometimes the garage may have targets for turnover, in other words, for the income coming into the business. So it may be possible that the target may be set uh, too high. So the people who are dealing with customers and sometimes this happens, not very often, thankfully, but there are rare cases of this happening where the, the employees in the, in the car repair shop, in the garage, they will find uh, fictitious repairs that are needed on a particular car, undertake the repairs, and then add those repairs to the bill, thus boosting revenue. That's, that's very rare, thankfully. Um, that's an example of unethical behavior motivated by higher, higher financial targets. Um, I think to the next point there, pressure to get results. Sometimes people cut corners to do things more quickly. Um, and in doing things more quickly, may, that may uh, have health and safety uh, knock-on effects. Unethical leadership and, and, and management, sometimes the, again, rarely, certainly rarely in my experience, but uh, the leaders, leadership and management can be motivated by achieving certain targets uh, to appease uh, stakeholders and as a consequence may compromise the values, the ethical stance of the, of the business. We've just mentioned ill-conceived goals with our garage, uh, setting targets to, to, uh, to high possibly. And then to finish up, then motivated blindness. That's where people um, don't actually, they, they know something's happening in the business. It could be a, f um, a fault on a, a particular car that has been manufactured, but they don't see the fault, even though they know it, it exists. They are merely sort of focused on sales and then generate an increasing, increasing sales. So motivated blindness is when you know something's happening, but you choose not to act on it because you were, you were more focused on a high, on a, um, another uh, target, on a, another outcome. And that can have uh, uh, very serious consequences to the people who are, who are affected by the uh, unethical behavior. Okay, um, one of the key concepts in doing good, it's good for business, is corporate social responsibility, CSR. Um, CSR comes in a whole range of different um, levels from uh, uh, basic um, philanthropic uh, deeds undertaken by the owners of the business. And a phil philanthropic deed typically is giving money to, uh, to charity, for example, or it can be using your employees to volunteer uh, I know that uh, ASDA, for example, they have a scheme where they allow their employees to volunteer in local parks and, and, and gardens to, uh, to plant trees, etc. Or it, it can be the um, undertaking of uh, a foundation, like, for example, the Cadbury's Foundation that has been, uh, was set up in uh, 1935 and it ever since has been working with charities to, uh, to, to develop the, the charity's work. But it can also give a, a competitive advantage. A competitive advantage basically means that you have a, an advantage over your rivals. Um, and that advanta advantage typically comes in the form possibly of cost leadership. You, you're producing a, a, 
a lower cost but a, a product but of hopefully of equal quality or it can come in the form of a differentiated product a product that has um, possibly have has unique features and in this case competitive advantage can come in the form of the values of the business the values of the business expressed in uh, its charitable work possibly or its um, its work in terms of as I just mentioned with um, um, with volunteers to build on the Cadbury example um, Cadbury's Cadbury's founders when the business started to develop they uh, they created uh, um, they built new factories but the new factories were built in the countryside and they coined they produced the term uh, a factory in a garden so they were actually uh, creating a far better environment for the workers to live to work uh, they create created a playing fields for people to play tennis and and football etc um, and they encourage everybody to learn how to swim and so on and so forth they were creating a, a um, a lifestyle, if you like, for their uh, employees and the uh, and their environment. So, do we have a moral obligation, the duty to do the right thing? But well, increasingly, um, the answer to that question is is yes. Uh, people are becoming more and more focused on the values of the business. There's a really interesting uh, quote there, going way back to 1987 from uh, Brundtland. Uh, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. And that's increasingly becoming, uh, we're far more aware of climate change, etc. But it's increasingly in terms of understanding how we use our resources, how businesses operate. It also gives businesses a license to operate. And what, we, what, what we're referring to here is the values of the business matching with the values of the stakeholder and the stakeholders could be investors could be suppliers could be employees could be customers but the license to operate is basically allowing the business to to function investors coming in with finance uh, is a, there's an increasing focus uh, today on uh, green finance or sustainable sustainability um, finance where the finance is provided based on the business's green credentials or the business's sustainability credentials it gives the business also a reputation to strengthen its brand image its brand increasingly businesses are expressing their their uh, their values uh, publicizing their work with uh, fair trade organizations for example uh, businesses selling fair trade coffee and publicizing it in their cafeteria uh, areas in their restaurants for instance so it, it's it's linking an organization's brand possibly with another organization's brand like fair trade but also creating an image for the business that it cares it cares about the environment it cares about its customers it cares about its community uh, as there is a good example again of a business linking its um, its work with the local community and publicizing publicizing that there are examples however of businesses sometimes uh, providing money to charity to try to boost its image but then spending more money publicizing the um, the charitable charitable work then they actually give money to to uh, to charity uh, example of that is a tobacco company in the, in the USA uh, that spent more money publicizing the charitable work than the money given to uh, to charity it can also boost morale in the in the workplace and we'll we'll see that in a, in a moment with an example of uh, the the logistics company TN, TNT it can also help with the stock price in the stock market uh, businesses are increasingly focusing on a triple bottom line and a triple bottom line looks at what are the financial outcomes of the business activity what are the um, impact on society from the business activity and what are the impacts on um, 
the green part of the environment from the, from the business activity. There's a strong case against corporate social responsibility. Uh, the first point there focuses on, well, acting within, um, with, with, within an ethical sort of stance is the role of the business of government. The government sets, creates a legal framework uh, in terms of employee legislation, consumer legislation, <coughs> health and safety legislation. It's the business of business, some people say, just to behave within that legal framework that's, that's presented by, uh, by government. Some people consider corporate social responsibility as a sideshow. In other words, taking people, resources, um, business strategy away from the core function of creating a profit, profitable business and taking the business off in another direction, using up resources and, and time. And the final point there, other people's money. Well, investors, what do investors want primarily? Well, primarily most investors want a return on their investment. They want the business to be successful and to provide a return, a financial return on the investment that's been made in the business. And some people say that the duty of the business is to focus solely on generating a return and should they be using other people's money to further possibly their own values and their own ideas in terms of, uh, in terms of ethics. The different levels, I've mentioned some of these already, uh, corporate uh, philanthropy, giving money to, uh, to charity, um, managing risks, and, uh, code of conduct, again that's sort of, if you like that's sometimes that's housing health and safety policies. I've also mentioned using uh, corporate social responsibility as competitive advantage to match the values of the business, to link them with the values of the or the customers, for example. And there's a really, really interesting, interesting quote there. The more closely tied a social issue is to the company's business, the greater the opportunity to leverage the, the firm's resources and capabilities and benefit society. And we can have a look at that in some, in some more detail in terms of the benefit, in terms of the benefit, uh, the benefit to, uh, to society. Okay. An example, mentioned this very briefly a moment ago, TNT. Um, and the phrase I want to focus on here is, well, the work that TNT do, they often offer emergency help uh, where if there's a disaster in a certain part of the world, with a, possibly with a flood or an earthquake, they, they, they offer help. And they also use their knowledge in terms of logistics and, and uh, transportation and moving people and, and uh, materials, like for, for example, um, medical materials, moving those to where they are uh, needed. So that's what they offer and offer that, often offer that free, free of charge. A key phrase there, I think, is uh, it's providing a soul to TNT. In other words, it's sort of, it's coming into the culture, a culture of giving, a culture of cooperation and collaboration. The two, word, two, the two last words I mentioned there, collaboration and cooperation, are fundamental to um, innovation taking place in organizations. So you can work, for example, like TNT um, have, have been doing, to provide and give and share knowledge. And then if that comes back in terms of an expectation, a culture of sharing, of cooperation, collaboration, the organization is more likely to be innovative uh, and by innovative, we mean developing new products, new processes, new services that customers want, you know, adding more value to the business. And this is, I think this is um, fundamental, I think, to the future of business, creating shared value. Creating shared value is basically um, creating an economic value that also creates value for society. And one of the best current examples is uh, the production, the research, development and production of um, electric cars. 
Clearly, clearly there's an issue in terms of climate change. Uh, there's a significant push in many countries to, um, to not to have uh, petrol and diesel cars in the future and to switch to electric uh, vehicles. And that's a great example of creating shared value. So the business is creating value for itself by creating um, the um, electric uh, cars, but it's also creating value for society in terms of less pollution, less damage to the environment, and, uh, and a slowing down or possibly reversal of uh, climate change. Ben and Jerry's great example of a business where uh, doing good is good for business. Uh, and a, a little phrase there, brief phrase, link prosperity defines our success. What it basically means is Ben and Jerry have expertise in creating win-win situations. They work with, um, work with farmers, for example, to produce more uh, sustainability, sustainable ingredients for uh, ben and Jerry's uh, products. Uh, so the farmers win. And also then ben, Jer ben and Jerry's win because they are using uh, products that are sustainable, that are more environmentally friendly, uh, that are arguably then healthier for, the, for their customers. So they're creating win-win relationships, so linked prosperity. So prosperity is, is that of benefit, of, of winning, for example, and linking, these benef linking the benefits across its business and its um, suppliers. Social innovation, um, social innovation, very similar idea to creating um, social value, shared, shared social value, um, very similar. Social innovation is innovation that benefits society. And again, that kind of example would be um, electric, um, electric uh, uh, cars, for instance. Um, social innovation can also strengthen supply chains in terms of working with um, suppliers in across across the world uh, to benefit communities in different parts of the world. Again, line, uh, in in line with Ben and Jerry's idea of creating these win-win relationships, and also the idea of talent retention um, to retain talented staff. One of the ways of, of doing that in a business is to uh, enable people to work with a sense of purpose. So if people feel that they are doing good, not that everybody wants to do good, but if people feel that they are doing good as well as benefit in a the business, then that can give people a sense of purpose and make it easier to retain uh, talent within the, within the business. So, a summary, um, our business ethics are an oxymoron. Is doing good good for business, or are they contradictory terms? Well, the evidence suggests, certainly the current evidence suggests, that although there's, there are two sides to the argument, some people say the business of business is to do business. Uh, Milton Fried, Friedman uh, mentioned that, famous... Uh, uh, American uh, economist and other people like uh, Doug McMillan uh, are saying that uh, doing good is good for business. Um, it's a debate that's arguably coming more increasingly towards uh, that doing good is good for business because, it, because of the benefits it brings to uh, business, linking the values of the customers with the value of the business. As I mentioned a moment ago, creating shared, sh creating shared value between the business and society, electric cars, a great example of that, how, how, how that development is, uh, is, is happening. And one of the more recent uh, aspects of, um, of business is a focus on the, kind, the kindness economy. And the kindness economy um, has a great emphasis on, on caring and on something called uh, um, sentience and 
sentiments is something that sort of people businesses become a more more aware of people's feelings or people's emotions um, and become better at understanding uh, customers customers values customers beliefs and the notion of uh, sentiments is that you link in the business's activities with people's feelings with people's emotions um, and that may become increasingly part of the, the high street in the UK. Uh, so we see more different kinds of businesses on the high street and different kinds of activity taking place on, on, the, on the high street with this greater focus on the kindness uh, economy. Well, thank you very much for uh, watching the uh, um, class, the lecture, and I, uh, I, I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much.